Hey everyone, so today what we're talking about is photo electron spectra, which is kind of like mass spec, but instead of dealing with like isotopes and neutrons, we're dealing with electrons. So this is called photo electron spectra, okay, or they'll just call it PES, okay, PES. And you'll see this a lot on the AP exam. They love uh, showing you guys this stuff. So, what it is, is it's just a chart, a graph, where on the y-axis you got relative number of electrons, and on the bottom you have binding energy, okay? And uh, binding energy, I believe it's like megajoules per mole uh, or kilojoules per mole. It doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and just use kilojoules per mole because that's pretty standard. And one thing you have to know is that this graph is a little weird, is that the greater numbers are to the left, okay? You're, it actually decreases as we go right. So this is like 1,000 kilojoules per mole, and then it'll go to like 100, and then later on it'll go to 10. And what you need to think about is that down here in the corner, this is like where our nucleus is at. Okay, so our nucleus is down here, and you'll see what I mean here in a little bit. Okay? So let me just give you the electron spectra of a few elements, and we'll go from there. So what we'll do, we'll let's go with carbon. Okay? Carbon uh, has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, and 2p2. Okay, so what happens here is that you get one peak for 1s2. Okay, that is a 1s2 peak. Sometimes they put dashes over here, sometimes they don't. Okay, so you just got to go off of it based off relativity. Okay, so this is our 1s2 peak. It won't say 1s2 on the graph, but I'm going to put it there. You'll have a 2s2 peak later on, and then you will have a 2p2 peak. So this is 1s2, this is 2s2, and this is 2p2. You got three peaks, each one for one of those configurations of 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, and depending on how many electrons there are is how high the peak is, okay? These are all very short peaks because they only have two electrons each, okay? But let's say I were going with nitrogen, or actually let's go neon, which is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, okay? What would this end up looking like? Well, Let's start from the beginning, okay? First things first, neon has more protons, right? Carbon just has six protons, neon has 10 protons, okay? So it's gonna be harder to knock away those inner electrons just because there's more protons in neon. So what do you think is gonna happen to this peak? Remember, binding energy decreases as we go this way and increases as we go this way, and we treat this corner down here as our nucleus. So what is going to happen with this peak? It's still going to be the same height because it's still 1s2. The only thing is that it's just going to be a little closer. Okay? It's just going to be a little closer just because there's more protons in that neon nucleus. Same thing with this 2s2. It's going to be a little closer as well. Still about 2 uh, electrons up, but this 2p2 is going to be closer as well, but there's not no longer two electrons, right? There's now six electrons. So that peak is going to be about three times as high as that other peak, okay? So again, <coughs> as we keep going and keep going down in the electron spectra, those Peaks are going to move closer and closer to this because there's more protons. It's going to be more closer, more heavily bonded to that nucleus. 
Let me go ahead and let me give you one, and you have to identify it, right? So let me go ahead and let me give you a electron spectra, a PES, and let's see if you can identify it on your own, okay? So let's go with So let's look at this guy. This is our photoelectron spectra from, for some sort of element. We're unsure, okay? Well, we know this is 1s2. That first peak is 1s2. That second peak is 2s2. And what's that tall peak going to be? It looks about three times as big as this guy. Also, you see some electrons after it, so this guy has to be 2p6. Right. The next one, that same peak, has to be 3s2. But now, there's that other peak, right? I'd say it looks about half of that 2p6, so I say it would be about 3p3. 3p3. 3p3, if I look on the periodic table, that looks like it's going to be So all we're doing is we're looking at these, we're going side to the electron config or off to the electron configuration and showing that it represents our peak. You don't go into the uh, d orbitals, they won't do that, that's too confusing. They'll just stick with the s and p orbitals. So what if I were to give you, instead of phosphorus, I gave you chlorine. Okay. How would this look different if I gave you chlorine? Well, first thing, chlorine ends with 3p5. Okay, chlorine ends with 3p5. So, first off the bat, we could say this guy is going to go ahead and he's going to increase. He's not going to be quite as high as 2p6, but he'll be pretty dang close. The other thing that is going to happen and is everything's going to shift a little bit left. Again, chlorine has... 17 protons, phosphorus has 15 protons. So everything's gonna shift a little bit more left because it's gonna take a lot more energy now to knock out those electrons, okay? So I'll just do it for this first one because it's the only one I could change e easily. But imagine everything else shifts left a little bit more as well. Okay, so that is photoelectron spectra. They love to ask you questions about this. They love to compare between two atoms like I did here with phosphorus and chlorine, and you have to tell me what happens, you have to see how it changes, okay, you'll be seeing a lot of that, okay? Coming up, I'm gonna show you some examples of photoelectron spectras of a couple more elements, and then you are good to go. Hey guys, so these are some photoelectron spectras that you will see. Uh, here they actually give you dashed lines for the number of electrons, okay? Sometimes they will give you that and they're nice, sometimes they don't. So I always just plan for the more difficult one, which is just relative size. So here's hydrogen, right? It's just a 1s1. It's just a tiny little peak. It's kind of far away from the nucleus over here. It's just got, here they do megajoules, okay? And it's just about got some megajoules of about one to knock that electron out. But as you see, as we go down towards helium, we get a higher peak because its electron configuration is 1s2. And now, instead of it being 1.31 megajoules, it is 2.37 megajoules. Uh, we're going to go to our next element, which is lithium. So imagine what will be on the lithium one, and let's see what actually shows up. There it is. Look at that. We got 1s2 and that 2s1 for our lithium. And as we keep going downward, we are going to go down to beryllium now. As you can see, that gets closer. Now we got our 2s2 peak. And as we go on down to boron, everything shifts left a little bit. And we get another 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, 2p2, everything shifting left, 2p3 for nitrogen, 2p4 for oxygen. 2p5 for fluorine, and 2p6. And you see, as we go down more, these peaks shift left. So there's our neon. 
Here's sodium with that 3S1 popping in. Everything again is shifting left. Magnesium, 3S2. Aluminum, 3P1. Silicon, 3P2. Phosphorus, 3P3. Sulfur, 3P4. Chlorine, 3P5 and argon 3p6 and once again there go those peaks moving closer and closer to that nucleus because we're getting more protons and making it stronger do they give us any more <laughs> potassium and then they'll give us calcium let's see what scandium looks like that's the d orbital okay so we got 1s2 uh 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 it looks like we got a 4s2 and it looks like here we got a 3 D1, a lower energy level, right? So that 3D1 is going to get closer to that nucleus, right? Because this was 4S2. This is 3D1. So it's closer. So it actually takes more energy to knock out that 3D1 than it does to knock out that 4S2 electron. Which element? Well, geez, it's only, what, one peak? Say about two? Okay, it's hard to tell here because it could be, there's no labels here, but we'll just say that each line is one. So I'm going to say that that's 1s2. I'm going to say that's helium. All right, here we go. We got 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3, which once again is phosphorus. And then this is what real spectra looks like. Okay, hopefully you don't have to ever uh, do this yourself and identify all these but if you do someday it'll be a little bit more confusing this has multiple elements in it okay it's element with a mixture of fluorine oxygen nitrogen carbon and silicon so this is nothing you'll see on the ap exam we just get to deal with nice simple elements like this so that's